Foundry includes this one initial patch. That's all it contains. The whole point of the Foundry is for you to design your own patches. The reason why we want you to do this is so that way you're not using someone else's patches. You're not pulling up the exact same sounds, the exact same patches, the way it responds, the way it operates, just like everybody else. So that way you can have a unique imprint into the pieces of music that you're writing, whether if it's for EDM, scoring, uh, pop songs, doesn't matter what it is, you're going to be able to get to a point where you're doing the designing of the sounds yourself and you're not relying on other people to have given you all these preset type patches. So in this video, I want to show you the basic in and outs of how to use the Foundry and how you can get around and how you can start developing sounds for yourself. We're going to have a series of other videos too that can get in much more deep into developing like grainers and how to use the step sequencer and how to actually use the randomizing page. So it's, it's a very in-depth program and we don't want to scare anyone with it because we have a lot of tools that get you to the sound that you want to use as fast as possible. So a couple things to notice here. Uh, this is Foundry version 1.0. The Foundry ships for contact version 5.4.1. We do have a version for 5.3.1 available on request. For this video, we're going to be using Contact 5.5.1, which is the latest version of Contact upon release of version 1.0 of the Foundry. So when you're working with the Foundry, you can do a couple of different things. If you're using Contact 5.5.1, you can actually go in and enter into the snapshot mode where you can start saving all your patches and have a whole list of patches that you can actually load up from this window. So I'm going to go ahead and start a patch called Initialize. And that'll be my first patch. I can also do a file save as, and I can go in and save the foundry as, you know, the foundry initialize if I wanted to and create my own NKI, which stands for native contact instrument, um, and do it that way. But for this version of contact, let's go ahead and start using these snapshots because they're very handy when you're wanting to start to design sounds. So the very first thing I want you to do is to pull up the randomize page. This is this button here in the corner. It's You're loaded up on the performance page. That's what the performance page looks like. This is the randomize page. The randomize page is where you start setting all of your parameters to start generating and creating your own patches. So in this instance, I want to go ahead and start with a, uh, let's do a cold and breathy uh, organic uh, bed with a texture that's both simple and complex and is pitched. So let me go ahead and just randomize and see what sound we get. Yeah, I could be happy with that sound. It's a really nice sound. I'll just randomize again, see if I can come up with a different sound. Now I can also use my templates. Now templates are a way of quickly making Foundry do something. It's They're almost like batch processing or a mode that you put Foundry into. So we have all kinds of different modes that I'll get into in another video. Um, for now, maybe I want a, a fast pulsing volume, uh, a pulse on volume. Or maybe I want it to be a very, very slow, like low pass filter pulse. Now, one thing to note with the Foundry, um, in the performance page, we have access to all kinds of various parameters within the Foundry. Very first thing I want to point out is down here in the corner, we have an undo, redo, and randomize button. Now, this randomize button is the exact same randomize button as this. So whatever parameters I have set here, currently it's pitched, bed, texture, cold, with a cold, breathy, and organic feeling uh, based upon our AARE engine, it will generate a patch 
based upon those adjectives that we've assigned. And so I can just press this button and it will randomly start going through and generating and creating patches for me, uh, putting varying body types on it, uh, different compressors, um, and whatever effects. So now I have a completely different sound than what I just had. Now say I wanted to get back to that other sound I was working on. Well, I can go back through the list here. Maybe I did want to go back to the other sound. Well, I can redo the patch. Now, one very important thing to note here is if I start changing anything, start adjusting any parameters, if I undo and then redo again, it won't save those parameters, not at this stage. It only saves undo and redo features whenever I hit this random button. So just be aware of that. It's just for quickly getting through a patch and then going, mm, you know, I liked that previous patch better and getting back to it. Now I want to quickly talk about some of the sounds that we've created for this library. They source from all kinds of different things, from guitars to cicadas to pianos to flutes to choirs to drums to percussive elements, big hits, drops. Um, we've tried to give you a very wide spectrum of sounds that you can create from this library. We recorded some synths so you can get some more of uh, some older 70s sounds. We created some kind of rompler style old Fairlight um, or um, Synclavier style sounds. So you can get that kind of 80s, early 90s vibe if you're trying to go for some of those sounds. We also have a whole host of 90s to 2000 style, um, you know, more of those longer beds, richer textures uh, that were very popular then. And now we've also incorporated a lot of sound design that we are doing for movies. Uh, some of the same techniques um, we've also implemented into this library as well. So it's a it's a very wide spectrum of sounds uh, that you can generate um, with the Foundry. So let's start looking at a couple of sounds. Let me just randomize through again. Now the Foundry is based upon four different voices. And each of these voices is assigned essentially to this quadrant in our morph pad. So right now we have uh, a couple of textures and beds that are loaded up. We have these washy rivers of harmonics, some hushed muffled hums, and then a slow breathy bidge, and some slow icy pitchy shimmers. So each quadrant is tied to one voice. Now let's say I wanted to just work on one voice, I can just be up here and now I'm just working on these washy rivers of harmonics. I can start going through and start randomizing just the effects here, and now I've got a completely different sound. And I can, of course, turn these on and off, add distortion myself. If I hold down the shift button, I can apply distortion to all the sounds. Hold shift again, and now we're back to normal. A lot of different things you can do from here. We also have uh, control over the master effects, so if you don't want any chorus or phaser or flangers being applied, and just do that, turn off the reverb all together, and then you have a very dry sound. Um, we also have this morph pad, and this morph pad, as I showed you, you can go through and kind of isolate individual voices. You can also record a motion on this morph pad and play this back. So you always can get this really cool motiony things happening. You can also sync this to your host uh, DAW. And the other thing that's really cool is you can actually apply this to a CC value. Again, we'll get, go into this a little deeper in uh, future videos, but just kind of give you a rough overview. Another quick thing you can do is if you are not happy with one or two of the sounds, let's say I really like these three sounds, well, I can lock it and I can hit random here and it's gonna give me some different sounds as I go through. So this is all the different sounds here. Or say I wanted a randomization on these two guys. While keeping these two voices handy. 
on the randomized page, it also shows up those locks and you can clear them here, from here as well. If you wanted to go in further into each individual sound, you can go into each individual voice. So notice here you have this ice cream dream pad, you can go into there. Um, you can do um, everything here about uh, all your ADSR controls, how it's triggered, how it morphs. Um, you can go into each individual parameter within the sounds. So right here, these are all your parameters, the grainer, filter, body, compressor, distorter, delay, rotors, and sequencers. Well, we also have that uh, individual control over each voice um, straight from each voice tab. So if you do want to start getting more involved in crafting and creating your sound other than just randomizing here on the front, you can actually go in and start designing those sounds on your own. Let's go back quickly to that previous initialization patch. Just press this back arrow here, pull up the initializer, or you can just you know click on initializer. Um, and I'll pull up this patch. Let's say I wanted to turn on the sequencer. I wanted to quickly show you what the sequencer looks like. So this is a 6-8 pattern. <clears throat> we'll go into this in a different video. I can also turn on a pulser on my dark saw bed. I've got this applied to a step filter. Now all of these are within the settings page. Again, we'll have another video on this, but I can set up different step filters or LFOs and I can apply them to different assignments based on each voice. One other quick thing to look at, notice how each voice has a different color. Before they were just two yellows and two greens. Well, each voice represents a different um, group type. So we have beds, pads, effects, rhythmics, and textures. Well, with this, you have blue as effects, reds as rhythmics, yellow is beds, and green is textures. In the next video, I'll be showing you a lot more about what this randomizer page is, what each of these adjectives actually mean and how they function, as well as get in just a little bit more into the randomizing page and how to actually develop a sound.